All right, ladies and gentlemen, it is now time for our opening bout of the evening. Six rounds in the heavyweight division brought to you by Salida Promotion, sponsored by Bet Online and Veggie, also the Dort Financial Center here in Flint, Michigan. Introducing first fighting to my left out of the red corner. He comes in wearing the black trunks trimmed with the red and the silver. Weighing in officially at 206 pounds. His record, eight wins, one loss, one draw. Five wins coming by way of knockout. Joining us from Lincoln, Nebraska. Ladies and gentlemen, please welcome Aaron Quintana. And across the ring, his adversary fighting out of the blue corner. He comes in wearing the black trunks trim with the gold and purple, weighing in officially at 238 pounds. His record, 10 wins, three of those coming inside the distance against three losses, fighting out of Saginaw, Michigan. Ladies and gentlemen, here is Robert Sims. And we are ready to get underway from Flint, Michigan. Opening bout, Robert Sims, Aaron Quintana, six rounds between two heavyweights. Robert Sims in the black and gold trunks. Aaron Quintana wearing the black and red. Came in weighing in 206.4 yesterday. And for Robert Sims, 238. Big boy. Yes. It's a big boy. Justin Jackal and Claudia Trejos with you here for tonight. Shields versus DeCare coming up later on in our broadcast, 9 p.m. Eastern start time on pay-per-view. And it is going to be historic. First and foremost, all women. All women pay-per-view for the first time in yes. history. Never been done before. Watch greatness. That's what we're doing. We're watching greatness in the making. I just want to point out um, Sims. Nice and sturdy, legs are solid. Just a little too, too much doubt when he wants to open up with that jab. Robert Sims entering tonight's action, 10 and three, three knockouts. He's from nearby Saginaw, Michigan, 36 years of age. And this is not his first time fighting in this building. So had a long layoff like many did due to the pandemic, didn't mm -hmm. fight in 2020. His last fight came here at the Dort Federal Event Center in Flint. Came away with a unanimous decision victory over Demetrius Banks in October of 2019. So a long layoff, but that really is the theme as several fighters get back to action here tonight. And that's one of the joys as Quintana loans with a nice left hook. Interesting because Quintana, as a matter of fact, he's been on have a nice long layoff as well, but he already has another fight set up for April. So talk about a fast start. He wants to come away clean and unharmed in this one 13 years and nine months that is the pro experience of Aaron Quintana out of Lincoln Nebraska eight one and one with five knockouts uh, isn't an action too often but he makes the most of it when he comes inside the ring yeah he definitely he's game he's engaging he's starting all the action he's actually looking for that fight Interestingly enough, he goes under that uppercut, left uppercut, and no jab, zero jab. Sims missing with a variety of punches, lunging forward, and Quintana showing pretty good mobility against Robert Sims so far. He did connect there with a right uppercut. And another one as we get close to the final seconds of the opening round. Nice exchange, Quintana sold that round.
One round of the books, start of round number two between Aaron Quintana and Robert Sims. And Quintana, again, wasting no time. He's been the busier fighter so far. Yes. And uh, if Sims wants to leave his mark in this fight, he better start acting a little faster. Not even his counter punching has been very effective. And that could cause him problems once you start losing. It's a short fight, only six rounds. He doesn't have much time to lose. Good block there from the left hook from Sims. Quintana read it nicely, and he scrapes him with a left hook. It is quite evident, though, who has the upper hand in agility. Yeah. It's evident from the stance. Even though Sims has very strong legs, he's just taking too long. And the way this fight is going and the pace that Sims is uh, going, it's not going to help him. This is his third fight here at Dort Federal Event Center. He's won the fight here. He's lost a fight. Fought three times in 2019, and really three times per year on average throughout his pro career. Quintana, like we mentioned, been a pro for over 13 years. Closing in on 14, he turned pro at 19 years of age, and he began his pro career as a 168-pounder. But he's got had long layoffs between 2015 and 2019. He never fought. So it's interesting because he only fought one time in 2019. So in reality, we're talking about rust, a lot of ring rust, which is not reflecting right now because he's the one that's looking for the action. Coming inside, Sims turning his back ever so slightly there against Quintana. And Quintana continuing to stay busy. Nice two-punch combo there from Sims. Yeah, Sims is taking advantage of that lateral movement, just making it harder for Quintana to reach him, which was exactly what happened in the first round. Smothering left hook from Sims a little early moments ago, and he connected with a right uppercut right there as well. Sims looking a little bit better on his feet, moving around and Agreed. going corner to corner, really. Yes, yes, yes. He's actually using that lateral movement to keep Quintana off balance, and it's giving him good results. Yeah. He's having a hard time finding his reach again. Last half of the round or so, Quintana's having a tough time reading that lead left. Start of round three between Sims and Quintana. And, you know, after two rounds, we saw two completely different versions of Robert Sims. It was all predicated off movement. Quintana was having a tough time with that. And here as they engage in the middle of the ring, seeing Quintana coming away with a couple of clean uppercuts at the outset of this third round. But we like to see Sims take that mobility here into round three like he did in the second. I agree. Uh, Quintana was doing a great job in the first round, just keeping the, the fight in the short distance. And then Sims found out in the second round, he just decided to move. And now he's going to have to use a combination of both, trying to cut distance, making sure he can connect. But uh, Quintana has now just lost his mouthpiece. The time is called by the referee, Ansel Stewart. And we're back in action.
one of the lost arts of boxing is starting combinations with jabs. As you can see, they're always going for that uppercut or that hook, and they don't set it up. They don't open up that defense to make sure they can actually shorten the distance. That becomes an issue when you go up in level of opponent. And we're seeing zero jabs from both zero. gentlemen here. A couple of solid left hooks from Quintana here this round, but Sims not moving as much as he was in the second. I forget the weight. 238. Thank you. That's all I needed to I ask. I think you would like to forget it as well. That's carry that kind of mass along three minutes worth of boxing. That, that takes effort. Oh. That one stumbled Sims just a bit. Yes. And you can see his legs, especially that right leg, was just not as sturdy as it was. And that's the one that he uses for that overhand right. Katana sensing. He's able to pull off a trigger right there. And he continues to come forward. I think they're both gassed. There's a little bit of exhaustion on both parts. Good shot to the body with the left hand from Quintana and a nice counter left by Sims. Another left hook catches Sims. And we hear the corner from Quintana saying that's our round. Uh, not so sure. It is good to see though after each and every round Good sportsmanship. Yeah. Touching gloves every three minutes that gone go has gone by. On this corner looking for those body shots. And obviously they're trying to neutralize this movement, lateral movement. You have to be able to cut the corners, cut the, cut the ring. And his footwork is not as sophisticated or refined to be able to do that right now. Sims and Quintana getting going here in round number five from Flint, Michigan. I'm with Claudia Trejo, I'm Justin Shackle. At the opening bout for Shields and DeCare. Accidental headbutt. Sharply left from Quintana. And a good counter left by Sims. Gets out of the way. See, they're trying to go for that lower uppercut that will go into the solar plexus just to slow him down. It's, it's incredible when we're talking about that size and the mobility. Sims just connected there with a right, a right uppercut. You mentioned potentially being gassed both fighters. Yes. Big reason why we are not seeing too many more punches after an initial. Combo's coming at a premium here. Yeah, we cannot complain. They came in and they're all game. They're both looking for the fight. And Quintana was doing a great job in the first round and now we see that the pendulum has slowly gone towards Sims because he finally realized that he's gotta walk the ring. He's gotta cut the corners. Good first round assessment from Robert Sims. Quintana coming in, like we mentioned, a lot of time in between matches, but he has won two straight. 
Sims has won two in a row as well, five of his last six. He's been the busier fighter in recent history. Finally got himself out of the, the ropes. He was having a hard time trying to get the weight of Quintana off his body. It's interesting, Sims at just his height, but bending that forward leg, which opens up obviously his chin, facilitating that uppercut. You just saw a double jab, Claudia. You just saw a double jab. I can't <laughs> believe this. I called it. They heard me. More sharp movement from Robert Sims here is Time's running out. Wow. Beginning around number five here in Flint, our opening bout of the night, Robert Sims, Aaron Quintana. Both men have had their moments. Ansel Stewart giving some time here to Robert Sims. That's interesting. <laughs> he called action and didn't ask Sims if he was ready to go. Movement continues for Robert Sims. Yes, I'm highly yeah. impressed. Well, Quintana closed the fourth round solid because yes. he just kind of stood right in front of him. And obviously, he realized it had given him good results second and third. Can he elevate it to just another level over the last round and a half or so? If he could do that, I think it makes it a lot easier on the judges. Nice. Did you see that yeah. matrix move right there? Katana's got a free hand. Gonna might as well use it. Technique. Yep. Right oh. oh, nice combination right there by Sims. Good combo left uppercut. That snap back the chin of Quintana. And now we start to see a little more combos from Robert Sims. I, I told you. A little different dimension here in round yes. number five. He was running out of time, and now he wants to sell his win to the judges. So great movement in evading some of these counters from Quintana. Good left hook from Sims. And another that connects. Yeah, now Quintana is losing his composure. He comes back with a left hook. But Sims throwing more fists here in the fifth round. Yes. The rhythm has been knocked from Quintana, that's for certain. Now, oh, that was a good left hook that Quintana threw and connected right on Sims' jaw. Might have been a low blow. A 
close range here to end round number five, but Robert Sims finding his footing in the most literal of senses and having a firm grasp here in the latter rounds. Yeah, it's. Uh, it, I'm wondering what took him so long to find his rhythm, find his pace, find his tempo, but it, certainly very effective in this fifth round. The distance was there, the mobility was there, the combinations were there to the point that Quintana just became a little chaotic because he got frustrated. It feels like after every round though, we're also asking ourselves, okay, can Sims keep going? Can he keep doing this? True. And now it's to the point where we're at the sixth and final round and maybe we're surprised that he actually can't do it. <laughs> so we'll see what happens here. I, I'm happily surprised. I By the third round, I thought he was gassing out, and uh, well, I proved him wrong. Turned out to be a, a, so far, and see if he could close it like we hey, mentioned, but an entertaining the display the of those 238 pounds. Yes. Sixth and final between Quintana and Sims. Robert Sims trying to get his second victory in this building in Flint from nearby Saginaw, Michigan. And the exchanges unloaded here in the sixth and final round. Sims continuing to stick to that game plan here, going corner to corner, mm -hmm. continuing to shuffle. It's worked for him well. It's kept Quintana off the mark. And the difficulty of keeping that mobility with your legs and still being able to be effective when you connect. It's not, he's not just throwing, he's really connecting and causing damage. Oh, he connects with a new, nice left hook there that forces a smother from Quintana. Quintana scrapes him with a left hand. And if you're Sims's corner right now, last two minutes, so minute and change, you do not want him to deviate from this game plan. In the corner, I can actually hear Quintana's corner asking him to just move, move, and go into the laterals. Uh, but he's standing literally in front of Sims and munching everything. Left uppercut from Sims. He, nice right cross. Haven't seen too many of those in this fight. When you're the shorter guy with a shorter reach, you want to keep that fight nice and tight, very, very close. That way, you, the bigger guy doesn't have enough space. And he obviously has the durability and the chin to sustain it. About 40 seconds to go here in the sixth and final round between these two heavyweights. Robert Sims on the verge of victory number 11. Now in Quintana. Having a tough time since that opening round, literally catching Sims. Sharp left hand from Sims, counter from Quintana here in the closing seconds. Well, that was an extraordinary exchange right there. Yeah. That was a nice, nice pace. Close. Yes. Sportsmanship at its best. For sure. Quality five rounds after that opening first. But like we mentioned, the final five, and Katana kind of pumps his fist and then shakes his head back and forth, left to right. So for a moment there, he thought, okay, maybe he had an idea. He, he did enough, but then shook his head in the negative. This, this, as odd as it may, may seem, is a tough card to score. There was a lot, the pendulum kept going back and forth. But 
I give a lot of credit to somebody like Sims who recovered from a disastrous first round that he didn't do anything. And all of a sudden, mobility came in, combinations came in, even double jabs that we saw. Recovering is 90% of the battle. Both fighters coming off long layoffs, returning to action. And they go the distance here in this sixth round opening bout between two heavyweights here in Flint. The six full rounds, we go to the scorecards. Here are your score totals. Judges at ringside, Pat Schmidt scores at 60-54. Catalina Chambers has it, 58-56. As does David DeYoung, 58-56. All for your winner by unanimous decision, Robert Sims. Ladies and gentlemen, our first prelim bout will be on the way coming up in less than 10 minutes on the Fight TV app. And then at 9 o'clock local time, we go live around the world on Fight TV pay-per-view, all brought to you by Salida Promotions, along with Bet Online of Veggie and the Dort Financial Center here in Flint, Michigan. Our pay-per-view is the first ever all-women's boxing pay-per-view in the history of the sport. So history will be made as Clarissa Shields will look